about geometry. So today we are talking about 3.3. .3. I know this says proofs, but um, this year being what it is, we will not be dealing with most of those proofs, okay? So um, this is more practice with angles, all right? And angle relationships. Uh, so our first one says, if two lines are cut by a transversal and the, hint, hint, it's in the corresponding box. So if the corresponding... angles are well we just learned the other day that if we have two lines that are parallel then the corresponding angles are congruent this one is the converse of that hey from chapter two right 2.1 so the converse is when we take the hypothesis and the conclusion and we just reverse it right so if this says if two lines are cut by a transversal and the corresponding angles are congruent then the lines are parallel awesome right it's just reversing it. So instead of if two lines are parallel, corresponding angles are congruent. Now it's if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Converse. Woohoo! Um, so if we're looking over here, we would have statements like uh, angle one is congruent to angle five, right? Because they're both in the top left. Um, angle four is congruent to angle eight. Um, angle two is congruent to angle six. And angle three is congruent to angle seven. All right, those would be the statements. Those are the corresponding angles, I guess I should say. All right, alternate interior angles, converse. So if two lines are cut by a transversal and the, hint, hint, alternate interior angles are well what is their relationship if the lines are parallel they must be congruent remember that's the case for all of these angle relationships with the exception of linear pairs and consecutive interior so our alternate interior angles well this is the interior right here so let's just pick angle four angle four is alternate and interior with angle six and then angle five and angle three are another alternate interior pair. All right, the next one we have is alternate exterior angles. So if two lines are cut by a transversal and the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So in this case, let's just pick angle one. Angle one is alternate and exterior to angle seven. And then angle two is alternate and exterior to angle eight. Those are our two sets of alternate exterior angles. Consecutive interior angles, right? So if two lines are cut by a transversal and the consecutive interior angle are, this is not congruent. Okay, don't write that. They have to be supplementary. Remember, supplementary. Supplementary. That's a really tiny space to write supplementary on. Um, so that would be alternate or uh, consecutive interior. So that'd be like angle four plus angle five equals 180, or angle three plus angle six equals 180. Right? Those would be the statements that would be made. So if that's true, then L is parallel to M, all right? Any of these statements would prove L is parallel to M. All right, down here, we want to determine if L is parallel to M based on the information given on the diagram, all right? Based on the information given. So these wooshies, remember, tell us that those angles are congruent. Right? They tell us that angles are congruent. That's what the wooshies. As long as they have the same number of wooshies, right? So, like, if I had two wooshies here and two wooshies there. If I had two wooshies and one wooshie, that one, right? These angles are not congruent to each other. Okay, so, our number one right here. First question we need to ask ourselves is, what's the relationship? All right, that's the first thing. The second question we need to ask ourselves is, should they be congruent then, or should they add to make 180 supplementary? All right. 
And that's only in if they have a relationship. Some of these won't have a relationship and that's okay. Or they'll have a relationship that doesn't matter. And we'll see that in a second. So with number one here, these are both in the top right, right? This one's inside, this one's outside. So they are both in the top right. So these are corresponding. Well, corresponding angles, according to up here, should be congruent. Hey, look at that. They have one wuxi or two wuxis each, because I drew on mine. So they are congruent. So L is parallel to M. All right, down here, I'm going to zoom in. We've got our two angles here. What's their relationship? They are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles, according to up there, are supposed to be congruent. Yes, they are congruent. So L is parallel to M. All right, number three right here. We actually didn't talk about this up above, but you guys should remember they only share a vertex, so they are vertical angles. That is their relationship. They are vertical angles. Wait a minute. We didn't talk about them up there, right? There is no vertical angle converse. That's because vertical angles are always congruent. It doesn't matter if the lines are parallel or not. So this one is no. L is not parallel to M based upon, oops, excuse me, based upon these vertical angles. Doesn't tell me anything about the lines, right? Doesn't tell me anything. Um, and that's because we don't have an angle from this line. We only have angles from L and our trans, or from M and our transversal, not L and M. All right, this one down here, number four. What is their relationship? 125 degrees and 65 degrees. Well, they are consecutive interior. Wait a second. Consecutive interiors are the supplementary ones, right? So that means that 125 plus 65 must equal 180. Is that true? Does 125 plus 65 equal 180? No, it is not true. And that's because it actually equals 190. So they're not supplementary. So this is another no. L is not parallel to M. All right, our next one right here, we've got two angles that are labeled with 63 degrees. What is their relationship? They are alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles are supposed to be congruent. Yes, they are congruent. Therefore, because they're congruent, the lines are parallel. So L is parallel to M. All right, number six over here, we again have consecutive interior angles. We've got 105 and 75. So consecutive interiors when they're supplementary. So we should have 105 plus 75 is equal to 180. Is that true? Yes. Yes, that does in fact equal 180. So L is parallel to M. And we are good there. All right, let's take a look at our next page. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so for this upper part right here, it's a pretty complicated diagram. Remember to cover things up, all right? Cover them up so that you're looking at simplified ones. What we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, angles, say they're congruent, and then look at which lines would be parallel, and then name the converse the relationship, okay? What is their relationship? So, you know, corresponding, consecutive interior, alternate interior, alternate exterior, right? That's what we want to look at. So angle two and four. Two and four right there. I'm going to cover up this because I don't need that, right? I'm just looking at those two. So I like to start on the relationship side and then say which lines are parallel. That just works better in my brain. Their relationship is corresponding. All right, they're corresponding angles. If they're congruent, then that means this line here and this line are parallel. Well, those lines are called C and D. So C is parallel to D. How do I know it's those ones? Because A is the transversal, right? A is the one that touches both of them. It's the line that's the same between them. Let's try angles 5 and 10, all right? 5 is here, 10 is there. That means I can cover up this whole thing because I don't need it. Um, so angle 5 and angle 10 are alternate interior angles. 
C is the transversal. It touches both of them, which means A has to be parallel to B in this case. Be careful about your B and your D. If you need to use capitals, go for it because I'm dyslexic, so I mix them up sometimes. All right, angle six and angle seven. Here's angle six and seven. So I'm going to cover up what I don't need. They add to make 180. Well, what's their relationship? They are consecutive interior angles. Um, they're supposed to add to make 180. They do. Therefore, A is their transversal and C is parallel to D again. Ooh. Okay, so I gave you guys bad advice just for the record. We use lowercase letters to represent... Um, lines right singular lines so if you have to use capitals that's fine but just fyi i did say it wrong it's just really hard having a lowercase c and lowercase b just change one of the line names i suppose all right angle one and angle 14 here's one and here is 14 so i do not need anything over there there's one and 14 um they are alternate exterior angles that's my little angle symbol there. It's like got a whooshy, you know. Um, if they are congruent, which they should be, then that would mean that A is parallel to B. Um, angle 14 and angle 15 are down here, so I can cover up this part. I don't need it. Um, they add to make 180. Well, these are consecutive interior angles. Um, they should add to make 180. So that would mean that C is parallel to D. B is the transversal, right? B touches them both. So it's C and D that are parallel. All right, 11 and 16 are right here. What is their relationship? They are vertical angles. They should always be congruent, always. So this tells me nothing about the lines. I don't know what the lines are doing. I don't know what's parallel to what. All right, 4 and 15, angle 4 and angle 15 are right there. I can cover this side up. Um, they are alternate exterior angles. Uh, if they are congruent, which it says they are, then that would mean that A is parallel to B, right? A is parallel to B. All right, angle 10 and angle 12. So I can cover up this part. Angle 10 and angle 12, they are in corresponding positions, so they are corresponding angles, um, and B is their transversal, so C is parallel to D. All right, uh, angle 9 and angle 13 right here. What is their relationship? They are a linear pair, right? They are a linear pair. What should they be? They should add to 180. They should be supplementary, so that's good. But that doesn't tell us anything about the lines. You'll notice that on the other page, we didn't talk about linear pairs converse. So this tells us nothing about the lines. Not a thing. All right, angle 2 and angle 1 are up there. Angle 2 and angle 7. They are alternate interior angles. They should be congruent, so that tells us that C is parallel to D. A is their transversal. And then angle 6 and angle 11. You'll notice they don't have any lines in common, angle 6 and 11, um, right? C and A uh, intersect to form angle 6, and then B and D intersect to form 11. So they have no relationship, and we know nothing about the lines. All right. No relationship. We know nothing about the lines. Again, apologies for stating that you could use capitals. I know if that's what you need to do for your brain. That's fine. Uh, however, I would encourage you to just rename one of those lines, B and D, and um, make sure you use lowercase. All right. So the next four down here, we actually have to do a little bit of math. I know. Goodness. A little bit of algebra, really, because this is math. Um. So for this one right here, I'm going to encourage you to write down what their relationship is first. Okay, what's their relationship? So putting my fingers on these two, I can see that their relationship is they are alternate interior angles. All right, they're alternate interior angles. What should they be? They should be congruent. So that means 10x minus 23 should equal 137. So now I can add 23 on both sides. So I get 10x is equal to... 
160. When I divide by 10, I get an x equals 16. Do not skip steps, all right? Don't skip steps. Make sure you show everything. So show the adding 23 the dividing by 10. Every step matters. All right, for our next one over here, um, these are consecutive interior angles. So that means I should have 96 plus 6x minus 30 is equal to 180. Consecutive interiors are the only ones that are supplementary. They add to make 180. I can combine my like terms here, so I get 66 plus 6x is equal to 180. When I subtract 66 on both sides, we get 6x is equal to 114. And then I need to divide by 6. 114 divided by 6 gets us 19. All right, our next one down here. What is these? We, we have our angle here, but we also know an angle right there, right? So um, because you know this angle, you actually know this angle as well. So there's a couple different things you could argue with me about, but I'm just going to look at these two and say, well, those two angles, the ones that are marked, I know that they are corresponding. All right, I know that they are corresponding. You could also do alternate exterior because this one's also 90 because they're verticals. Technically, all of these are 90, right? So that means that they should be congruent. So 4x minus 18 is equal to 90. I'll just write a little square thing there. We know it means 90. Then we have to add 18 on both sides. So we get 4x is equal to 108. We divide by 4, and we get 27. My favorite number. I should know that. All right, over here, the converse of uh, these angles. These angles are actually alternate exterior, what we were just talking about. Alternate exterior angles are congruent, so that means 23x plus 1 has to be equal to 27x minus 19. So I'm going to add 19 on both sides, so I get 23x plus 20 is equal to 27x. I'm going to subtract 23x, So we get 20 is equal to 4x, and then when I divide by 4, we get 5 is equal to x. Always a good idea to go back through and double check, right? Plug it back in, see if it still works. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or let me know. Uh, but hopefully, really good about these angles.